Uh, yeah, hi friends, uh, my name is Kip Chandu and welcome back to my channel Energy and Environment Education. Uh, friends, uh, today's video is very important for all the aspirants uh, who are looking forward to take exam, basically the energy manager exam or the energy auditor exam uh, this year or in coming years. I hope uh, my videos are helping you anyhow preparing the exams because I've already uh, posted number of uh, videos on different chapters and again this chapter is very important for all everyone of every one of you. I hope you are liking the videos. Only one request from my side before I begin the, uh, the video on this chapter that if you have not subscribed the channel, please do subscribe because this is going to motivate me to prepare more such videos in coming days and hopefully uh, these videos are uh, helping you anyhow. My tips, what I, whatever I am giving in the video that I am that I'm posting in, uh, in, in days, in last days, few days. So those videos are helping you anyhow. So only request from my side is to please subscribe the channel. Uh, like it friends and also please do comment from your side because I'm not finding too many of comments from your side uh, This is going to help me out to understand whether it, the videos are helping you or not And if any suggestions if you have from side that also will be really uh, I mean help me to understand your thoughts and actions So please do uh, like this video subscribe my channel and also please uh, Give uh, post some comments on the video because that will only le let me know understand your thoughts and whatever your expectations are for my content uh, in the different videos that I have already posted and which I should post in coming days friends. So this is the only request I am having from my side and let's start the video and uh, hopefully this video is also going to help you anyhow in your exam preparation friends. So as far as the content is concerned, friends, I will uh, I'll start with a short introduction on the on the reflection part first, and then we'll give you a, a brief explanation of what is vapor uh, compression reflection system all about, and also a bit of in, uh, I mean explanation on the vapor absorption reflection system, and what is the difference between the two type of system that I have mentioned here. That difference is also very important as far as exam is concerned. So I'm going to deal with all these four important points and which may help you to prepare your exam and which may help you to understand the chapter and also which may help you to understand the concept of different type of reference system friends. So these are very important as far as exam is concerned because different types of questions you can expect maybe the shortest attack questions on the explanation on the different types of reference systems also on uh, differences you can expect what is reference all about you can expect and uh, maybe uh, uh, also uh, objective questions also you can expect and also numerical based question also you can expect from this part of chapter friends so it's a very important uh, chapter as well as what i said in the earlier also it's a very important chapter as far as the exam is concerned and also this part of the chapter is very very important for you to understand the concept wise also is very important to understand so let's start the video now uh, basically with the short introduction on the reference part first So as far as the refrigeration is concerned friends, uh, basically they may ask you to define what is refrigeration all about or maybe they may ask you to explain refrigeration in a very brief manner. So you can expect some short type questions on refrigeration. So basically definition if you they ask you, so you may write it down in this way, refrigeration deals with the transfer of heat from a low temperature level at the heat source to a high temperature level at the heat sink. And also you may explain this particular concept, whatever it is given here. So you may uh, define it in this way and also a bit of explanation you can provide there of this definition. As far as the application is concerned, they may ask you to define the reflection system and as well as, as give the application of reflection. So basically when you see the application part, there are two basic major applications. One is for air conditioning system, which is used for comfort and the other one is for uh, reflection of process. So there are two major applications of uh, reflection system. So when you face the questions in exam, so you may be asked to define it, a bit of explain it, uh, this particular definition and also uh, give the application of other reference system. This is what uh, reference is all about, friends. And also, uh, and also, this particular formula. I mean, not formula exactly. This particular term is very important. So what is one ton of reference? This particular number you should remember because this is not only for the objective questions. In the objective questions, they may ask you okay, what one ton of, ton of reference value is. So you need to understand and uh, you need to remember that. 3024 kilocalorie per hour uh, is the uh, one ton of refrigeration. This is one important term that you need to understand. Also, this is very important as far as the numerical is concerned because 
based on this particular term the numerical is also uh, asked where this is applied so you need to uh, know this particular term what is 1 tr and uh, how much is the value of 1 tr that is 3024 kilocalorie per hour heat radiation this is very important friends as far as the exam is concerned you may expect some questions from this part of the chapter also and now the very important part that is the uh, vapor compression refrigeration system so basically there are two types of uh, refrigeration system so one is the vapor compression the other one is vapor absorption so we'll explain and understand what the two major uh, types of refrigeration systems are and what are their applications you can say or what is the differences between the two types of refrigeration system so first of all we are going to start with the vapor compression refrigeration system friends So this particular diagram is very important for you to understand friends as far as examination is concerned because uh, you may expect some questions based on this diagram either they will give you the diagram and they will ask you to explain the different components and the cycles which is presented here or they will not give you the diagram they will just ask you to draw your draw the diagram from your side and also give brief explanation on the different components and also the cycles presented here friends so as a whole this is a very important diagram for you to understand as far as examination is concerned also uh, one more important point is here is as per the concept of uh, vapor compress compression refrigeration system is concerned this entire cycles will, uh, will uh, presents the entire concept of the system because once you understand this cycle you understand the entire vapor compression refrigeration system friend so you need to understand this particular cycles so if you see the components here basically there are four components uh, the first component is the ahu the second component is the evaporator third is the condenser and fourth is the cooling tower and as far as the cycle is concerned, basically there are five different cycles. The first cycle is here between the AHU and the air, uh, cool air which is supplied to the cooling area. The second one is the, between the evaporator and the AHU. The third one is between the condenser and the evaporator. The fourth one is between the cooling tower and the condenser. And the fifth one is between the cooling tower and the air. Uh, so basically this is the different cycles you need to understand uh, and the brief explanation you need to provide in the exam friends if they, are, if they ask you to explain it also the different components also you need, need to remember and the functioning of the different components what these uh, different components uh, functions i mean like hu what does hu do, uh, do and what is the function of evaporator what is the function of condenser and what is the function of cooling tower so all the functions of different components also individual components also you need to understand and as a whole uh, the entire diagram is very important for you to understand as far as the exam is concerned friends uh, again, this particular diagram is important as far as the examination is concerned because they may ask you to draw this diagram and uh, explain in brief the working principle of the vapor compression system or they will give you the diagram and they will ask you to name the different components like compressor, condenser, expansion valve, evaporator as 1, 2, 3, 4 they will give you and they will ask you to name it and also they will ask you to briefly explain the different components, their function, basically what is the uh, function of evaporator or the compressor or the condenser or the expansion valve here in this particular diagram frame. So this particular diagram is also important for you to understand and also important is the is uh, uh, working principle of the comp I mean the vapor compression system friends how it works so I have uh, given a short clip on this particular uh, vapor compression system friends how it works and the working principle of it so basically in this, the coming slide I'm going to present you a, a short video or short clip on the entire vapor compression efficient system friends so let's the, watch the video and let's try to understand how the uh, entire system works and it uh, and the working principle of the entire system friends major parts and components and basic working procedure of the vapor compression refrigeration system so here we have a compressor after that there is a condenser then there is an expansion valve or throttle valve or we can simply call it a valve and finally there is an evaporator so these four major components together construct the vapor compression refrigeration system all these components are connected together using these connecting pipes, thus a closed loop system is formed, and the refrigerant for this vapor compression refrigeration system will flow through all these components and pipes in the system. Now, let's see how these components work. Throughout the whole process, our main purpose will be to ensure that continuously cooling effect or refrigeration effect is obtained in this evaporator. We all know that this evaporator is the component where the refrigeration or cooling actually takes place. This evaporator is placed on the region where we need cooling, 
and then the evaporator absorbs all the heat of that region and passes those heat to the cold refrigerant passing through the evaporator coils, thus the surrounding environment cools down. So, let's see how this process works. First of all, this compressor starts working. The job of the compressor is to pressurize or compress the vapor refrigerant inside this compressor chamber. Here, in vapor compression refrigeration system we commonly use either ammonia, or freon as a heat carrying medium throughout the whole procedure. Now, we know that if pressure increases, it also increases the temperature. So, when, this vapor refrigerant is compressed inside the compressor chamber by squeezing the vapor very tightly together, it will heat up. After that, this high pressure and high temperature vapor refrigerant will leave the compressor and will enter into the condenser through this connected pipe. Here, we have a condenser. When high temperature high pressure vapor refrigerant enters this cold condenser, then the condenser absorbs the heat from the vapor refrigerant, and completely converts it into liquid. This condenser can be water cooled, air cooled, or cooled by any other substance from an external source, which will liberate the latent heat of this vapor coming into the condenser, and thus condensing keeps happening. So, in easier words, condenser changes the incoming high temperature high pressure vapor refrigerant into liquid state by changing its phase. Here we had vapor coming in, and now we have liquid refrigerant going out, so the phase is changed. Now this high pressure high temperature liquid refrigerant will leave the condenser, and pass through this expansion valve or throttle valve using this connected pipe. Now, this high pressure liquid refrigerant coming from the condenser will be expanded inside this expansion valve. We know that when expansion occurs, the pressure between the molecules decreases considerably, thus the temperature falls. So, this high pressure liquid refrigerant will be expanded into low pressure, low temperature liquid refrigerant. In practical use, at this point we do not get only liquid refrigerant, but here we actually obtain a mixture of low pressure, low temperature liquid and vapor refrigerant. Thus, here we get a mixture of very cold, chilled, low temperature liquid and vapor refrigerant coming out of the expansion valve. Then, this liquid and vapor mixed refrigerant will be passed over to the evaporator. We all know that, the main cooling effect or refrigeration effect always occurs in the evaporator. So, when this low pressure, very cold, chilled, low temperature liquid refrigerant will enter the evaporator coils, it will absorb all the heat present in the surface of the evaporator coils. By absorbing all the heat from the surrounding region of the evaporator coils, this cold chilled liquid refrigerant will completely turn into low pressure vapor refrigerant inside these coils, and the surrounding region of the evaporator will become cold by losing the heat to this liquid. Thus the cooling effect or refrigeration effect has occurred in the evaporator. After that, this low pressure vapor refrigerant will leave the evaporator, and enter into this compressor through this connected pipe. Now, this low pressure vapor refrigerant coming to the condenser will be again compressed inside the compressor chamber and converted to high pressure high temperature vapor. Then again this high pressure high temperature vapor will be passed to this condenser where it will change phase and will be converted to liquid. Then it is passed to the expansion valve, the evaporator and again to the compressor. So the cycle keeps repeating over and over again and refrigeration or cooling is obtained continuously in the evaporator region throughout the whole process. So, this is how vapor compression refrigeration system works. Thank you for So I do hope friends, uh, you might have understood the working principle of the vapor compression refrigeration system, how it works and, uh, and the different components, how they are attached to each other and how the different components also works as a whole. So I mean you might have understood that uh, uh, that working principle in the last slide. Now the another important process which is the vapor absorption reference system. Uh, in exam also you may expect some questions. Basically a brief explanation of the entire system. I mean the working principle also they may ask you how the vapor absorption reference system works. So they may ask you in this way and also they may ask you in a I mean uh, short answer type questions or a part of long answer type questions. But they may ask you to I mean explain in brief the working principle of vapor absorption reference system friends. So again I am presenting a short video on this part also just to understand make you understand how the this possible vapor absorption reference system uh, works and the working principle of the same friends.
World Energy's exhaust gas driven absorption chiller and eater, also referred to as CHP type utilizes exhaust gas from incinerator or gas turbine to generate cooling and heating. Directly recovery of the exhaust gas with a minimal loss maximizes energy efficiency. CHP series are supplied to combined and heat power generation CHP facilities. CHP and HWARL are used in CHP facilities. CHP utilizes exhaust gas waste heat to provide chilled and hot water. HWARL utilizes engine jacket water to provide chilled water. CHPL model, hybrid type absorption chiller, can use combination of engine exhaust gas and cooling water as a heat source. CHP absorption system recovers exhaust gas and provides cooling and heating in the following way. This process involves evaporator, absorber, condenser, low and high temperature generators, heat exchanger pipe and pump absorber and generator in absorption system work like mechanical compressor in electric chillers. Now following are the logistics of CHP absorption system. Inside the CHP chiller, refrigerant that cools down the inlet water is circulated by LPR solution. Heated after being used in cooling, chilled water flows through to evaporator, refrigerant evaporates and chilled water returns to the system. Vaporized refrigerant flows through to absorber, where it is mixed with the LPR solution, the diluted solution from the absorber flows to high temperature generator. Diluted solution in generator is heated by exhaust gas heat, separating into refrigerant vapor and LPR solution. Refrigerant vapor goes through low temperature generator and condenser, to be condensed and returned to generator. Solution goes through low temperature generator to release heat from refrigerant again and become concentrated solution, flowing to absorber. By repeating this cycle, the system cools down the chilled water which is then used for cooling. CHP systems heating works in a simpler logistics. Heated up by incoming exhaust gas in high temperature generator, the solution releases refrigerant into vapor, becoming concentrated solution which flows to absorber. High temperature vapor flows to evaporator, heating up incoming hot water. Vapor condensed to liquid by releasing heat, is then mixed into the solution in absorber flowing to high temperature generator, repeating the cycle. World Energy produces many more absorption chillers and heaters driven by variety of heat sources and heat pumps. Maritime chiller and fuel cell heat exchange are also available. Waste hot water from industrial process or hot water from district heating and solar cell, high temperature steam are used to driven our chiller products. World Energy is the first in the world to commercialize absorption chiller for maritime and offshore plant application, contributing to lowering electric and fuel consumption. Utilizing cooling water readily available from the sea water, maritime and offshore application provides near cost-free cooling system. Even without waste here, absorption chiller can utilize fossil fuel in areas with low fuel cost to provide cooling. So I hope friends you might have understood now uh, what is the, the working principle of vapor uh, compressor system and as well as the vapor I mean absorption system friends both the systems have been presented in, a, in different uh, clips uh, that I have given you in the last slides so I hope you might have understood both the processes now one more important question which you must understand and you must, which you must remember as far as examination concerned friends is the difference between the vapor compression and the vapor absorption system so let's see the differences basically the major difference first and then other differences also between the two systems which are very important as far as the examination is concerned friends So as a very short answer type question it asks you to differentiate between the vapor compression and vapor absorption system friends. So the major difference between the vapor compression and the absorption system is that vapor absorption system takes in low grade energy as waste heat from the furnace or exhaust steam or solar heat for its operations 
while the vapor compression system takes in high grades as electrical or mechanical energy for its operation of compressor compressor used in the cycle so basically this is a major difference between the two systems so if they are asking a very short answer type question so you may just explain or give this particular difference as a major difference between the two systems friends but again if they ask you i mean as part of a lot of long answer type questions with a good number of marks so in that case you need to also explain this two differences with other differences also which are applicable between the two systems friends so let's see the other differences between the two systems which are very important so here is the comparison chart uh, or the differences between other differences between the two systems two important systems that is the vapor compression and the vapor absorption system friends so you see the different particles here like suppose the working method if it is there so the difference will be that the refrigerant vapor is compressed here while the refrigerant is absorbed and heated here in the system and type of the energy supplied is the mechanical here and heat is energy supplied here as to the generator and input work is required here the so more compression work is required here in the vapor compression and less mechanical energy is required to run pump here cop if you see here that is coefficient of performance so high it is here it is low here in the case of vapor absorption system friends when capacity is concerned uh, limited up to 1000 tons of for single compressor while it may be above 10 uh, 1000 1, tons in the case of vapor absorption system friends noise it's more noisy it's quiet leakage more leakage due to the high pressure almost there is no leakage here operating cost high because of compressor consumes more work less because of less heat energy is required here suitable r12 and uh, ammonia are the two refrigerants which are suitable to both the i mean system friends so these are different particulars here uh, and um, among these particulars these are differences between the vapor absorption and vapor compression system friends so if they ask you as a, a part of long stack questions or with a good number of marks so in that case you may need to explain these different particulars and under this particular the differences between the vapor compression and the vapor absorption friends so this is very important as far as examination concerns so at least you must remember at least five of the differences between the two uh, uh, systems friends So with this friends i am ending the part a of the chapter and it's not, not the end of the chapter as a whole yeah, i'll also upload the other part that is part b of the chapter so stay connected with me friends and hopefully this video is going to help you anyhow for your preparation exam preparation friends and also the other video that i have posted uh, uploaded here so hopefully you have gone through the videos if not please do go through the, through the videos hopefully they may help you to uh, understand the chapters different chapters that i'm uploading one by one and also it will help you to prepare for examination because the tips that i'm giving you may be uh, helpful for you to understand easy to understand and also may help you in preparation for examination friends so stay connected with me for the part b of this chapter which i'm going to upload in a very short while i mean in a one or two days friends and last not of this friend please do subscribe my channel because this is the only uh, thing which is going to motivate me to pre prepare most videos in the coming days and post for you friends so only request from my side if not yet done please do subscribe my channel and also please press the bell icon such that you get the notification as soon as i post a new video uh, of different chapters uh, in the coming days friends and also please just, uh, share this video among your friends and colleagues whomever think uh, they, it is helpful for them also to understand for their preparation of exam so please do subscribe my channel please press the bell icon also please share the videos and other videos which i have posted in this channel friends to your friends and colleagues uh, uh, whom you think is applicable to them and for their concern friends. so this is the only request from my side so that's all for today for the time being and please stay connected with me because i'm going to post new videos in coming days and hopefully these videos are helping you somehow or the other in your exam profession friends